The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Hey, what's up, YouTube fam? It's Dupree, aka Darth Hater here. Back with another reaction. This one is to all three sizzle reels that came out for the Disney Star Wars Investors Day 2020. The Cassie and Andor series that's coming out. We have one for the Bad Batch. And we also have one for Star Wars Rogue Squadron, directed by Patty Jenkins. So, let's get to it. Um, let's start with the Cassie and Andor one, because... Uh, I'm really excited to see about that one. That's, like I said, that's in my favorite Star Wars time period, right before A New Hope, after Revenge of the Sith, that whole 20 year gap. So let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. I love this movie so much. I love Rogue One. In many ways, it's a film that connected new audiences with the the oldest. And he's executive producer. I didn't know that. It was a bittersweet feeling, you know, in the premiere, <laughs> knowing that it was just one film. I was actually at that premiere, but. But Not inside, on, happens, the, right? on the yeah. other side, on the street. As you can see, we're getting ready. We're building stages. We're rehearsing. Um. We're training. We're trying costumes. We're doing everything to make sure we do the best show. I'm really excited having the chance to explore Cassian. It's really fun to go on a set that is emulating something you like so much. The enormity of this is like doing a big feature film. It's very cinematic. For me, that's where the excitement is. 12 episodes, 12 scripts. Over 200 names. Like the Skywalker's members, jacket. Over 6,000 crowd people. A lot of creatures that come in from the creature department. We treat this hmm. exactly like we would have would have filmed. There is no difference in our approach. Every creature and droid that we've been building has the same care, level of attention, detail. It's the previous films. Oh. It's huge. It's thrilling, but also it's wonderfully challenging. There's tons of possibilities to explore. It is the building of a revolution. Whoa, wait a minute. That ship that he was... Oh, man. Okay, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, but like literally at the end, uh, right before you see the Imperial, whatever it is with the with the uh, interrogation droids, Cassian's flying some kind of starship, some kind of starfighter, or he's in it. But the, just the shape and everything, like even though you don't see the whole thing, looked exactly like the first versions of the Jedi starfighter. And it kind of had the same sound to it, the same engine sound. And everything I could be wrong I think it is I think I think it is though um, wow that'd be kind of cool also like the, the other concept art right there showed that they were in like a uh, uh, a scrapyard like for uh, old Republic you know for Republic cruisers and, and Star Destroyers kind of like the Jedi Fallen Order game I wouldn't put it past anybody that like you know he uses a Jedi Starfighter because you kind of see one in uh, the Jedi Fallen Order game like on the literally in the first level on top of the Star Destroyer there's like a down one with the R2 unit still in the socket so maybe maybe this is what he's doing also maybe this is Cassian you know following following in the footsteps of Cal Kestis in the opposite way because this comes after that but anyway it looks cool. It didn't really show us too much anything new aside from concept art. So, can't wait for that. No K2SO either. Bummer. All right. So, here we go with the Bad Batch. Let's go. They call themselves the Bad Batch. AKA the A Team. D D D D D D D. Wow, the animation looks so much better. Better than a 
conflict will be reorganized hmm. into the first galactic empire. Phoenix Shan. Another scrapyard. Hmm. That was quite oh, a snap. display. Oh snap. Oh. Okay, I'm sold. I am sold. Might as well just call that Clone Wars like 2.5 or something. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So a couple little things I took from it. Uh, I think this is obviously post Order 66. Um, you know, very first stages of the Empire are still using clones. Uh, I wonder uh, if the clones had actually, you know, gone through Order 66 themselves like had their inhibitor chips been activated and they had to like, you know, kill some Jedi. I wonder if that happened or since they're experimental, they didn't have one or were they just, or were their uh, chips removed kind of like Rex and um, and everybody and Gregor and, and everybody. Tarkin, Tarkin is in here, <laughs> which is cool. It's always good to see Tarkin. Um, the creature at the end, I'm not sure, but I, I think that might have been a Dianoga, either a Dianoga, the trash compactor monster from A New Hope, or a Sarlacc. Because in Galaxy's Edge, they showed us what a full Sarlacc looks like. So I'm, I'm betting on either or, but I'm leaning towards Dianoga. But other than that, uh, this looks pretty cool. Um, those earlier scenes I could tell were the training areas for uh on camino i definitely remember those episodes with like fives and heavy and everybody you know running the gauntlet this looks very very familiar and i i think that's what that is this show seems interesting i th what i think is maybe like you know something happens and then the clones like you know go off on their own and they're just trying to figure out things from themselves post the order 66. honestly if we were going to do a clone wars show um Clone Wars S show after um, the, you know original Clone Wars, I would have hoped to have something like Falling Rex, or you know maybe even Falling Ahsoka again. But we already have a Ahsoka show, so she doesn't, you know, just to have an animated show to actually Eckstein any excuse to get Ashley Eckstein like you know behind the mic. But I'm pretty sure this being the Bad Batch set directly right after she's gonna cameo in it, like you know at least once or twice, like it's. It's gonna happen, and the show is directed and created by Dave Filoni, so given. Bad Patch, the a aka the A Team, the real Star Wars A Team. And last but not least, we have Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I'm really excited for this one. I am really <laughs> excited for this one. I grew up playing that Rogue Squadron X Wing game, like a lot of Nintendo 64, and I, you know, X Wings. I'm like pro Empire, like you know, like I I have a Darth Vader costume, Boba Fett, and like you know, Storm, all that. Like I love the Imperial side of things, but you know, I I honestly would choose X Wing over Tie Fighter any day. But anyway, um, let's get with this one. See what this is about. I love to move fast and speed mm. of any kind. I think that that's because Patty I grew Jenkins. Up the daughter of a great fighter pilot. Rollerblading. And every day I would wake up and go outside and look up, and see my father and his squadron taking off and their F fours roaring across the sky, and it was the most thrilling that's thing. That's cool. Still, I've experienced in my entire life. So when he lost his life in service to this country, mm. I it ignited a desire to, in me to turn all of that tragedy and thrill into one day making the greatest fighter pilot movie of all time. But try as I might and look as I did, I couldn't find the right story ever. I kept looking hmm. and looking, but I just couldn't find the right one until now. Now I found a movie about two things I love. So I'm gonna see you very soon. 
Go snap. <laughs> oh, I love this. This that's so cool. Just play that Maverick. Just play that Maverick theme song. I'm sold. Oh man, that was cool. That's definitely probably the, the most favorite out of all these three scissor reels I really liked. And it was simple. I really liked her story and um, I really like Patty, uh, Patty Jenkins as a director and as a person. I love what she did at Wonder Woman 1984, uh, Wonder Woman and um, yeah, I'm excited to see what she does with Wonder Woman 1984. I remember Kathleen Kennedy saying a while back that they wanted to get a female director behind the camera and direct a Star Wars feature film and, and or TV show. They did it with the TV shows. They got uh, Deborah Chow directing The Mandalorian and a few episodes from The Mandalorian. And then also she's going to be directing the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series. But Patty Jenkins is on a different level. Like I'm really excited to see what she does. And just the passion that she, you know, shows for Star Wars in general. You know, her wanting to make a um, fighter pilot movie, which I've wanted to see for a long time, like, you know, really excites me. Um, this is going to be cool. Like. Uh, like I said in the last video, uh, we got Star Wars Squadrons, which was really cool, but it just kind of got me more hyped to get like a Starfighter type movie, which I've wanted. And ever since, you know, they announced, Disney announced that they would be buying Lucasfilm, that has honestly been one of the top movies that I've wanted to see them do. Like, you know, they had the, the thriller, the, the, um, the war movie with Rogue One, they had the heist movie with Solo, and, you know, and then they had, and then now they had the, uh, the basically the Maverick movie, which is gonna be cool. I'm curious to see, like, it's Rogue Squadron, so Rogue Squadron, if you guys didn't know, was a group founded by Luke Skywalker post uh, New Hope um, during those few, few years before they actually formed uh, Echo Base uh, on the planet of Hoth. So, um, you know, it was um, Luke Skywalker, uh, Wedge Antilles, uh, Zev, Hobby, um, a few others. Um, but yeah, he, it was started by him. And then um, they and then in the new canon books, um, they said that Luke Skywalker took obviously took the name and inspiration from, um, you know, um, Rogue One and what they did in their whole sacrifice because basically if they didn't steal the plans for the Death Star, he wouldn't have made like, you know, the shot and blown the Death Star up. So that's one of the reasons why he named, you know, Rogue Squadron after Rogue One. Um, I forget what book that is. I think that was, um, I forget what book that was. I, I, I have to check. But anyway, um, I'm wondering what era this is in. Um, I'm wondering if this is like post Return of the Jedi, post Empire Strikes Back, like where is the time setting for this movie? And if it's, and um, you know, seeing as like there's an old school X-Wing, there's a T-65, you know, the Patty Jenkins is getting in and also like, you know, the logo has a kind of looks more T-65 than T-70. You know, X-Wing, I'm thinking it's in that older era. era. Um, which I'm noticing a lot right now that Lucasfilm and everybody, they're trying to stay away from the sequel trilogy because of obvious reasons right now. So this is uh, this is definitely one to be watching out for. Um, anyway, uh, this has been my reaction to Cassie and Andor, The Bad Batch, and Rogue One. Oh, sorry, and Ro Rogue Squadron. Um, I hope you liked my reactions to this. Uh, post your thoughts and comments down below in the com comment section. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell so you can get notifications whenever I drop my latest videos. And thank you guys for watching this. May the force be with you. Catch you in the next one. Bye.